Hey everybody, it's Kristen here. Um, so as you might have read in the blog post that will accompany this video, um, I am a part of the fall 2016 um, Torrance Learning XAPI cohort. And so really super excited to actually start doing stuff with XAPI. And I know, you know, maybe a year, year and a half ago when I first learned about XAPI, I wanted to get started looking at an LRS um, and figuring out what exactly um, an LRS is and what it does. And so Learning Locker is an open source LRS. But as with um, a lot of things so far with XAPI, unfortunately, there is a lot of throwing around of names and a lot of really, um, really good discussion, but actually not a lot on how to actually get stuff done. Um, and so I had some instructions that even then were outdated and now they're, um, they've been pulled offline. Um, and I just, I could not get this thing installed, but I actually was just able to do so today with a lot of errors. Um, but I figured maybe it would help somebody to um, have a video of how to actually install Learning Locker on Amazon Web Services. So that's what I'm gonna be showing. So I'm here on Amazon Web Services and the first thing that I'm gonna do, I'm in uh, EC2 by the way. And the first thing I'm gonna do is actually create an instance and I'm going to use Ubuntu and note that it is version 14.04. I'm using the free tier and I need to edit the security group. So I'm going to use my IP for this. And the other thing that I'd suggest you do at this point is go ahead and create an HTTP rule there as well and use my IP for that. And then we can launch it. So this part is to get a key. Uh, I actually already have one, so I'm just gonna use it. Otherwise you would create a new key, um, give it a name and then download it and make sure to put it someplace where um, you know where it is. So I'm just gonna let that get online. All right, now that this is running, I'm actually going to give it a name. So that I can differentiate it. And then I'm going to right click and hit connect. And what I want is this little piece so that I can go to my terminal and actually log in. Gonna type yes. Okay, awesome. So I am going to go here. This is a website uh, called jpablo128.com and I'm gonna link to this. But he gives actually really good instructions on how to do this but they're a little bit out of date. So we're gonna have to, um, we're gonna have to change a couple of things up, but not too much. Um, so to get started, he actually used something called an um, LXC container for his step one to set that up. But since we're using Amazon Web Services, we're gonna start here at step two. So the first thing to do is to get the latest MongoDB and he actually has some instructions here, but I'm going to go straight to the MongoDB docs and get the commands that I need from here. And it's a four step process. So we start from there. Okay. We have again, version 14.04 of Ubuntu. So we'll grab this bit. All right, then we're on to step three.
And then here's the last step where we actually install MongoDB. Okay, so back to the instructions. He recommends doing a little test to make sure that it's installed. So we're going to type in the mongo command and we see our version. So note that his version was 2.6.6 .6 and we're on 3.2.10. Um, mongo is telling us a, a couple of things, but don't worry, you'll you'll still be able to um, continue even with that stuff um, yelling at you. So I'm going to exit and now we're going to move on to the next thing. So I'm going to grab this command and <laughs> typically you don't copy and paste things into your command line, but hey, that's what we're going to do today. So what are we doing now? We're installing the 500,000 dependencies that we're going to need in order to actually get Learning Locker up and running. Yes. Alright, so this is my SQL and I'm going to have to put in a password. Make sure that you write this down somewhere. Remember what this is. Tabbing to OK, and we repeat the password. Tabbing to OK. All right, so now we're on postfix, and what we're going to have to do is choose a mail server configuration. I'm going to go with internet site, and then OK, and I'm just going to put in my Gmail address here. All right, so that is all done. And once again, we're going to do a series of little tests to make sure that we actually installed all of the things that we needed to. Okay, that's running. Good. All right, so all of those things are up and running. A couple more steps here in this section. We're going to enable encrypt. And we're going to install Bower. All right, 
And last but not least, we're going to install Composer, which is just making sure I'm uh, at the very top. But uh, Composer is a package manager for PHP. All right, and then we're going to actually move the composer file into a different directory. All right. So the next step now is to actually get Learning Locker. So we're going to do this. I don't know whether or not you actually have to go into the HTML folder as well, but that's what I saw in other instructions um, and it seems to have been working. So we're going to um, do things a little bit differently from the uh, instructions and go into the HTML folder. And so now you can see I am actually in the directory I want to be in. The next thing to do is to clone the Learning Locker repository. And I'm going to go over to the actual repository, click the clone or download button, and actually get the um, URL that I need from there clicking the copy to clipboard button. Paste that, and we'll copy. All right, now we need to set up our database. So I'm going into Mongo. Okay, so we switch to a new database that we've called Learning Locker, and we need to create a user. And you have to put your password in here, so I'm going to be blocking this. All right, so I got a success message, so I'm going to exit. And now I'm going to clear so that we don't have to see my password there. And we're going to restart Mongo database. All right, so here is um, another thing that we're going to do a little bit differently from the instructions here. Learning Locker actually recommends not um, messing with the database.php file that's there, but instead creating a separate one. So we are going to follow their instructions. We're going to go into the new Learning Locker folder. And then into the app folder, and then into the config folder, and then into the local folder. 
and now we're going to use the Vim editor to create and edit a database.php file. All right, so I need to press I to insert, and I'm going to copy and paste this. All right, I'm going to use my cursor and go up. And so these credentials, username and password, are going to be the ones that you just created for um, your Mongo database. Again, I'm going to block out the password. And the database name is actually going to be Learning Locker because that's what we created. Okay, after that, all that's correct. I'm going to press Escape and then the colon and then WQ. All right, so that's done. On to the next step. So we're going to be going up a few levels back into the learning locker folder. And installing Composer here. Okay, it's not working. It's telling me that curl is not installed properly. Okay, so the actual command is this. All right, so now we should be able to install Composer. Okay, so that should be good. Now the next step is to do a database migration. And what I found is that we are actually, and I'm going to show you, yeah, so we're actually using an old version of the Mongo database PHP driver. So we've got to get that up to date before we can actually perform this step. So this person ran into the same problem and these are the steps that they followed. So we're gonna give this a try. Okay, awesome, that seems to have worked. So we need to restart Apache. And now let's look at our PHP info again and see if this works. Aha, we've got a new and up-to-date version. That is wonderful news. That means that hopefully, keep your fingers crossed, this next part should go smoothly.
Aw oh, man, that's all green. That's good stuff, so let's keep going and hope we don't get any errors later. Alright, so the next part We are changing the ownership of all the stuff in Learning Locker. Okay. Now the next thing is to go into the mail.php file and give an email address for that. So we have to go into the app folder, into the config folder, and let me just check the learning locker instructions to see if yep 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 they do so they again they recommend creating a local version and not messing with the original so we're going to follow their instructions so we're going to go into the local folder and once again we're going to use the vim editor to create and edit a mail.php file this time Okay, I'm pressing I so that I can edit this file. I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna go back over here. I'm not sure how much of this needs to be filled in. I think it might just be the address and the name. Oops. Although, actually it probably probably needs to be the whole thing. I'm not sure. But I'm just going to do this for now. Okay, I'm going to press escape, colon, WQ, and enter. So that bit is done. We're moving on to step five, setting up the Apache server. So the next thing that we need to do is to make sure that our Apache server file is correct. So we need to go all the way up to the top and then we need to use vim again and edit this particular file Now he doesn't show it, but this actually has a dot conf at the end, I believe. That's what we need. There we go. No, actually that's wrong. I'm going to press exit. I'm going to do this because that was wrong. Ooh, I misspelled Apache. That'll do it. Insert that either. Press enter. There we are. Okay, so I'm going to press I so that I can insert. I'm going to change server admin to my Gmail address. And importantly, you see this bit right here, we need to add this to our, um, to our file. Now, this bit right here would actually change the document root. Um, that might be something that you want to do. Um, I'm actually going to just leave this the way it is and just add this next bit. Let 
Let me make sure this is right. Okay, that's looking good. I'm going to press escape, colon, WQ. All right, so we're going on to the next step. I'm going to make sure all this stuff takes. Alright, and it's telling us to restart Apache. That's what we're going to do. Alright, so if all of that went well, now we're going to go back over here to Amazon. Uh, this is the newest one. This is the one I was working on. So I'm going to take the public IP. Okay, I'll just I'll go over here and paste this in slash learning locker slash public. Hey, and now we get to register our first user who will become our uh, super user, our super admin. So I'm going to put that in. I'm going to put in an email address and I'm going to choose a password. Ah, uh, okay. So this is actually happening because of the, um, <laughs> we didn't do that other bit with the SM and, uh, SMTP. So I'm going to go back and do that. I'm going to pause the video. And when I come back, this should all work. All right. So we're actually going to go back a step, um, and deal with the issue that came up. So we're going to have to go back into our mail.php file. It's there. Okay, so I'm going to use Vim. All right, so, and I need to fill in all of this stuff. Woot! All right, so yes, the answer was in changing the mail.php file and you can do that by just going back a step going here and changing this stuff now the other thing to note is that it looks like this is completely optional um for you doing a test like you might not even need to mess with this file at all but there you have it we messed with it um and so now I have a working version of Learning Locker. So the last thing to do, is I'm just going to create an LRS. It's going to tell me to verify my email. I'm actually just going to come in here since I'm a super user and just verify myself like that. Gonna submit. 
And hey, bada bing, bada boom, we have an LRS now that we can start to send statements to from our own computer. All right, so as I continue down the XAPI path, trying to learn how to generate statements, I will definitely keep you guys up to date. Thanks so much for watching, and hey, let me know if this was useful. Let me know if there's anything that I was missing, and maybe I can help you out. Thanks for watching.